What's up legends? I've seen a lot of talk recently about the quality of scrims and it's evident that a lot of casual viewers of NA Competitive Apex don't understand completely what's happening right now. So in this video, I'm going to show you why scrims have been more aggressive and not endgame heavy. So let's get into it. First, if you're just an NA fan or just a fan of one team, you're doing yourself a disservice. There's so many great teams and players worldwide that confining yourself to one team or one region is so limiting. If you think that scrims are poor quality because of fighting, you're missing the bigger picture. Just look at this map. Immediately after all the land team qualified, Sven, who is now an analyst for NRG, put together this map of landing areas for every qualified team. On Stormpoint, you can see that Launchpad has five teams, Cascade Falls has four teams, six landing areas have three teams listed, and four landing areas have two teams listed. But there are a lucky few that aren't contested. As you can see, the names are color-coded depending on what group they're in. The big issue for LAN is if there's a team in the same group that lands where you do. Like Crazy Raccoon and E6 will be contesting Checkpoint every single game of Stormpoint, or one will be kicked out. NRG is also landing Checkpoint, but they'll get it for free except for when facing Group D. But these are international scrims. It's first come, first serve in terms of who gets to play. That means all the groups are playing together, which means contests are bound to happen. Let's take a look at the World's Edge map. Seven teams are landing Lava Siphon with TSM, but luckily for TSM, no one in their group is contesting them. Seven teams are landing in Fragment, and just as a reminder, this is all subject to change. These were just the landing spots as teams as they qualified for LAN. Right now, teams are looking around seeing who they can bully out of their spot to avoid contests in the future. Some teams look at this list and decide that they need to have a new landing spot because they don't want to be contested in their own group. Getting contested in your own group is the worst case scenario. If you're group A and someone from group B contests you, that's annoying but doable. If you're group A and someone within group A contests you, that's every round you're guaranteed to be fighting someone off drop, which drastically lowers your chance of winning or doing well. KCP is a great example of this. They contested TSM and got bodied. Good thing for them, they're in group C while TSM is in group B. Now that we've talked about the basics of why people are contesting and how the process of mixing groups is happening, we need to talk about regions play styles. Anytime you have five regions coming together, play styles, metas, and rotations all clash. Put yourself in one of those teams' perspectives. You dominate your region, you have your landing spot, you have your own spots that you like to play, and you know every team you're going up against and where they like to play. When you enter an international scrim, all of that changes. There's no way any team knows where every team from all five regions play and how they rotate. They're bound to run into each other, fight for playable spots, and try to figure out where to go. But each region also has their own playstyle. For example, let's look at IG. IG is an EMEA team that lands at North Siphon. There are teams that land at the main Siphon buildings in EMEA, but they allow IG to grab the houses and the little buildings near Siphon and to use the jump tower for free every game. It's a gentleman's agreement not to wreck everyone's beginning of the game. But NA doesn't play that way. So each time IG tried to play their typical game, TSM pushed them and killed them. And I know TSM fans were puffing out their chests that they were killing people contesting them, but IG wasn't trying to contest. They just had a wake-up call that NA doesn't do gentleman agreements, but that's not the entire story either. Gamburai Otusan, an APAC North team for international scrims, moved from Frag, which is highly contested, to Geyser. They had Jusna land at Grandma's house, limiting the pool of loot even more for IG and forcing them to inch closer to main siphon. So now IG, who is typically an early rotate team who has to survive off limited loot, is now cut off from one of their only resources and be turned into free KP for TSM. This is just one example of the many times it's happening every game. If you think it's a bunch of teams randomly fighting, therefore making scrims poor quality, you're missing the bigger picture. If you expected LAN quality games, this isn't the place for you. This is where LAN quality games are made. I love international scrims. There's so much subtle competitive apex happening that it's just fascinating to me. This is when teams figure out which one is going to back down, which teams will have to move out to contest another team. And like I said before, everything that makes LAN great is happening now. Teams are learning how each other play, where they like to play, what comps they're going to run, and how aggressive the lobbies are going to be. On top of all the things we've already mentioned, teams are playing internationally and their lag and ping differences shouldn't go unconsidered either. I can't wait till everyone can play on an even playing field, but until then, let's enjoy the competition and realize how much is actually happening in these scrims. The Apex comp calendar has been updated and scrims will actually continue on Tuesday. If you were using the links from my Apex comp resources video, just know that the links have been combined. So instead of two links, you just have to use the one for drop spots and you'll also get the calendar with it. 
Thank you all for watching, and until next time, Legends.